Attention American poker players, do you want to legally cash out your poker winnings to PayPal? Then head to GlobalPoker.com and see why it's the fastest growing site for US players. That's GlobalPoker.com. Poker Stories is an audio series that features casual interviews with some of the game's best players and personalities. Each episode highlights a well-known figure in the poker world and dives deep into their favorite tales both on and off the felt. Hello and welcome to Poker Stories, a podcast brought to you by Card Player, the Poker Authority, and hosted by me, Julio Rodriguez. This is episode number 37, featuring Brandon Shaq Harris. Now, you probably remember Brandon's breakout summer at the 2014 World Series of Poker, but just in case you don't, let's recap. He won the 1K PLO event for 205,000, and he finished second in the 10K Raz for 182,000. Then he took third in the $1,500 limit hold'em for another 78K, and then he topped it all off by finishing runner-up in the 50K Poker Players Championship for 938 grand. His performance that summer was almost enough to win him Player of the Year honors, finishing second to George Danzer. In the years since, Brandon has continued to do well with six more final tables, including his second WSOP bracelet win coming in the 10K PLO event for 895 grand. In total, Brandon has won more than 2.8 million in live tournaments, mostly during the summer over the last four years. But did you know that none of that success would have happened if it weren't for the two-time Grammy-winning band Muse? Yeah, that band, but it was more when they sounded like this. Anyway, it turns out that Matt Bellamy, the lead singer for Muse, was actually the guy who introduced the game to Brandon back during the poker boom. It's a crazy story and you'll get to hear it on this podcast. We actually recorded this episode a few weeks ago and he was kind enough to come in on his own birthday. So that just tells you how nice of a guy Brandon is. Anyway, enough intro. Here's my conversation with the one and only Brandon Shaq Harris. Uh, Let me see, how should I start this? Because I've been stuck in a rut on how I start these podcasts. I think for you, I'm going to start with, sorry for being an asshole. Happy birthday. Oh, shit. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't even realize that when we we made this, I was like, what day is good? Thursday. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I guess it's my birthday. (laughs) Yeah. You sent me a text last night and it was, I was bleary eyed and asleep and I and you said oh you know I might not be up till noon so I said okay I'm not gonna bother him until he texts me tomorrow but then this morning I'm looking at Facebook and I got that notification pop mm-hmm. up and it's like Brandon Shaq Harris birthday yeah and I was like <laughs> oh my god how did I schedule this on his birthday this is well I scheduled it so I know I, <laughs> I should have said no I should have insisted you were out doing something fun no. this is I mean um, my girlfriend and I will like go to dinner and see a movie and she like decorated the house real nice for me mm-hmm. but I mean I haven't done anything for my birthday since I was like 14 right. or something doesn't so. that go that just goes away when you're, when it, you're little I mean I guess I don't know like I don't want to like bring the podcast like on a on a downer right away but no, like, we'll get to that I know you're I think I know your reference yeah but, sure uh, sure after that happened like that was kind of a a wrap on birthdays. <laughs> yeah. My, my excuse is that mine is during the World Series main event every year. Oh, really? Right okay. in the middle of July. See, so yours so is I'm like... I'm always working. It's my, my situation is so wasted on me. Like, <laughs> we should swap birthdays. You right? should have the April. This is the and I'll just time. I'll work through mine because I don't, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> the World Series is my birthday. That's good. So, what's, uh, so what are you these days? 37? Yeah. 37? Yeah. Yeah. You don't look it. I appreciate that. I yeah. definitely look at it now more because I've been really more what's so under than the, I should. What's under the the, the skull cap there? What do you got? Uh, the a, beanie. A fucking cesspool <laughs> of a brain. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, let's start at the beginning because uh, I mean I guess you you identify with Chicago the most, but you're definitely not from Chicago, right? Yeah. You've been all over. So let's start. Uh, uh, Racine, Wisconsin. 
How long yeah. were you in racing? Uh, we, my mom ran away with me to California when I was like two and I spent so two years. That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, my, my grandmother still lives there. Um, and I traveled back and forth, uh, like visitation stuff Yeah. until I was like eight. And then that stopped and I was just in California for a while. Uh, we were in Southern California and then, uh, my stepdad moved us to Farmington, New Mexico. Right. So we were like on the reservation, and then the f- I remember the first time we had this interview. Uh, you said you hated that city. And yeah. You basically locked yourself in your room. Yeah. Yeah. Good memory. <laughs> <laughs> that and it's in front of me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so you were just pissed. I don't know. I was bored. I uh, so. I mean, my mom passed when we were in New Mexico, and um, end of the I, birthdays. What's that? End of the birthdays. Yeah, end of the birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just a brutal situation for sure. Yeah, she was. De- she was like, she was definitely my best friend. Um, and all my friends in California were just being kids in California, so we didn't really keep in touch. Um, uh, I, I'm trying to be good with all my family or whatever. So I'm not going to like talk shit or whatever, right. but you know, my, my stepdad wasn't really around much. And so it was kind of me and my sisters at the time. Um, so there wasn't really, I don't know. I didn't, I wasn't into partying. I guess I had a lot of responsibilities. And no, you were thrust into adulthood pretty yeah, much yeah. at 15. And there's nothing there. Like, yeah, there's just nothing to do there. When I, I remember I saw Mesa's for the first time when we were driving and I'm like, we're not going to live in mesas, right? Like we, when we were like, when we just got into New Mexico, I'm like, yeah. we're not going to live by mesas or, or by these, are we? And I was like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I saw like a 7 like the generic <laughs> version of 7-Eleven um, with no Slurpees, which is like yeah. obviously the most important part, especially of, of an artificial company. You got at least throw something there. Are you eating a Slurpee there. right now? I am. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I saw the 7211, I knew I was fucking doomed. I knew that was it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, there's just nothing to do there, really. I, everyone just, like, partied, and, you know, I had a lot of responsibilities, so I didn't didn't really care to do that. And um, But once was, your mom passed, the whole thing was keep your head down and, until you can get out? and Pretty much. Uh, you know, just try to find, find things that will help pass the time. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, I started playing a bunch of music, and I – I was doing sports before that, and, and then I turned into, like, you know, music and arts and stuff like that. I yeah. started working for, like, doing promo for bands and all that shit. Music, you started playing guitar. Uh, then you well, – there was something before Chicago, right? Because you moved eventually to Chicago to pursue music. Yeah, I – um. New York, was it? Close, yeah. I – when I turned 18, I went to New Jersey uh, to help do promo for a band – I was uh, helping at the time uh, called Silver Chair, which is pretty funny. They were like, you know, rock music, kids my age. Um, Silver Chair is your age? Yeah. In my well, brain, I mean, they're they a little are older so now. much older than me. A little me. bit, yeah. But, you That's know, I mean, crazy. they were kids when I was when I was a kid, and they were, you know. I remember listening to them in middle school. Did you? I think so. Maybe that was the time to listen school, to them, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. They kind of they regressed uh, kind of <laughs> after that period, but I was really into them at the time. And then um, there was a bunch of drama, internal drama with them, like just like weird, crazy shit. And I fled. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be a part of this. Wow. Um, yeah. And, you know, I I was living with someone who was accused of some really heavy stuff, and. Uh, it was just someone that I had been communicating with for a while, and I, you know, he was working with the band, and uh, I was posting on their message boards. You know, I was just really into them, and all, all we had at the time were message boards, I guess. And then yeah, you yeah. wait like three minutes for a picture of your favorite band <laughs> upload on your dial-up. <laughs> so, you know, I would go on these message boards to help pass the time, and their website creator was like, "Oh, it's nice to see like a, a male fan who." who was articulate instead of, like, a bunch of teeny boppers or whatever. Oh, okay. And I didn't have, like, you know, I, I had poor father relationships at the time. So, and I didn't have friends. So, I've got, there's, like, a, a male figure who is working for the band that, you know, I like at the time. Um, And then, and, you know, I was trying to contribute and doing a bunch of street team stuff and um, writing stuff. 
uh, and then my mom passed and, you know, it was, we, I kept in touch with this person and then I moved out there and nothing like weird happened, you know, or whatever. But I just, I, you know, I found some shit out, I found out how like he got in, you know, how he, you know, the, the, the band was being managed by their mothers when they, oops, I fucking did the thing that you told me not to do. What? I hit, I hit the card player table. Oh, that's okay. Um, it's all good. <laughs> so strike one. Um, the band was being managed by their mothers before they got signed uh, by Sony, and so and so this guy was like, "Hey, I do website design, you know, I, I like your kids, you know, I like their music or whatever. I'll I'd be happy to do a website for their mm-hmm. whatever." Um, so when they got signed by Sony, he was already with them, so they didn't do like fucking checks or whatever. And yeah. then uh, he tried to to do the same thing by another group of kids who were like being managed by their moms. Um, this isn't to say anything fucking happened to, to these people. Cause like, yeah. like even if I, it, like, I don't think, I don't think so. Um, but it was a really weird situation. And then he it tried again with another band in a similar situation when we were in Canada. Um, and their moms informed me. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I heard some shit and I'm like, okay, I just gotta go. Yeah. So, so I left, I left there. Um, I have two things. Okay, my brain is dividing your story into two possibilities, just so you know. One yeah, is financial, funny. and one is way worse. Mm. No, it wasn't a fine. It definitely wasn't fine. Okay, fi- financial so we're thing, talking no. about the way worse possible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. like so, nothing, nothing. I didn't see anything fucking happen. I, of course not. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, I actually haven't talked I'm about having, this. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to me getting a private golf lesson as a child. Oh so. yeah, <laughs> interesting. So, it, what I was, my, my biggest concern at the time was like, I was like. A kid, I was like 18, it was yeah. the first time I'd been alone with like the internet really. Like <laughs> yeah. maybe I was watching some porn or something. Maybe there's some tape of like 18 year old me, you know, ha- yeah. like jerking it to some like to, to internet porn that, you know, if I ever got famous from playing music or something like that, <laughs> I would like, I would like suicide myself if yeah. it got released or some shit, I don't know. Jeez. But yeah, nothing happened, just uh, just turned out to be a really bad situation and uh, I needed to get out of there. You were so, good to get out. So I went back to New Mexico for like a year and regrouped, and then. Um, and all this time, you're like learning all the instruments, right? Uh, I mean, it wasn't in just... New Mexico. No, in New Mexico is just guitar. Okay. And then, um, I had a girlfriend in St. Louis, and so I went to Chicago, um, and that's when I started kind of playing everything, I guess. Yeah. And, and what what was the what was the I mean, obviously in Chicago, you're 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 still young. You're waiting tables, you know, trying to pay the bills. Yeah. Playing music. What was the goal? What was the dream at that point? I was playing music for sure. It was start your own a, band, put out your own album right away. Yeah, uh, I wanted to put together something really complex at the time. Um, I really wanted to do a project that was like an immersion in all the senses. So mm-hmm. like, I wanted to, I wanted to do something where like maybe there'd be like blocks of of a set where. Um, like chimney smoke would kind of come in and fill and fill you know the arena and the, or whatever the mm-hmm. venue, and that would be something I associate with like this this set of music. And then like the you know there'd be a lot of movement. I hate when bands are like just like stand there or whatever. I like a lot of movement. I mm-hmm. like people like fucking flinging their shit around. That's that's usually the sign of the regression of a band is like like Muse or Silverchair. Like back in the day, like they fucking went crazy and they would like just be flying all over the place and just like abusing their bodies. <laughs> and then like eventually making business um, decisions. <laughs> yeah. Eventually. It, yeah. It's like you, they start treating the guitar like it's their dick and doing like power moves and shit like that. <laughs> and like, and I'm just like, Jesus Christ, when, when they're, when you're not willing to flail yourself like around or like, you know, dive on a drum set or what, you know, yeah. like a little bit of uh, bodily harm, then I'm probably not going to be interested in singing your You want your the passion. Anymore. Yeah, I like that. You so, want them to sing it like it's the first time every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I want to believe. I want to believe that they believe, you know. I have a little bit of that with, like, certain singers that sound, like, uh, too lazy when they sing. Like, okay. if they're so good, it's, like, effortless. Okay. I'm not into that. Sure. Because then yeah. I'm just like, no, I want them to, like. You know, raw. I, I want them at yeah. their their peak yeah for sure before they cross the line into before they've like yeah. sung the song like a thousand times or you know exactly. whatever sure so the project was going to be like very visual i'm really picky with like uh with the me you know i felt i felt like i had a pretty good ear and if i made something i was happy with like uh it would sound good 
and then we do something with smells and maybe like X amount of people. Keep in mind, like, I'm not saying this is a terrible idea now or like not really cringy now or whatever <laughs> being this old. But then I was like 19 and I'm like, this shit's going to like fuck, blow everyone's mind. Whatever. <laughs> and then like you know, X amount of people who show up, maybe they get like a bag of like like a chocolate covered cherry that I associate with this song or whatever, which is probably also illegal, like to be eating stuff that, up in, I don't know, but what you, but you understand what I'm saying? Like every work. sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was supposed to be like not this sense. Sound, not this sound, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. gonna be like a sensory overload kind of project. And then like, then the underlying, or I mean, and that, that was a big thing for me, but I, I wanted to use that as a platform, I guess, to, uh, I was really trying to explore what I thought the purpose of life was at the time. And I was really trying to explore my mom's death and you know, if there's a God and um, just uh, the, you know, the pointlessness or just finding a point to living anyways, if like inevitably everything that's ever done is just going to be wiped out. Um, so, so yeah, I wanted Damn. to, I don't know, I, I get in my holes. I, I definitely get in, in my mode. So I was, I was learning about like, at the time I was kind of learning about I guess peak oil and I'm not saying, and I, I, I know I've studied this more now, but just kind of the effect of, of something like if there's an oil crisis, crisis, how does that affect the economy? What happens to like the middle class and upper class, you know, the classes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then what happens to us as a whole and then why bother living? Right. I, I guess yeah. like if, if mm -hmm. you're just killing time or whatever, if these are just experiences that like whatever. And, and the simulation theory at the time wasn't really even a thought. But um, I was just trying to explore that and then have a platform to kind of talk about the way we prioritize our lives um, and uh, how we might need to compromise in order to evolve as a species, in order to preserve our past. And, you know, I figure, I guess the short of it all is like uh, my opinion on the purpose of life is um, is to preserve life, is to make sure that the things that you're doing uh, have any sort of worth because – the things that you've done uh, are still relevant to the history of us. Um, the species still exists, so your impact is has has a point to it. Um, That's actually uh, interesting, just because I, I read uh, on where was it on your website that poker does nothing for your self worth. Yeah. So for sure. I mean, we we'll get back to your music, but well, can you explain that a little bit? Um, I mean, I think a lot of poker players have this sort of internal debate with themselves. A lot of poker players are geniuses who could be, you know, doing a, a bunch of great stuff for humanity or whatever. And, and they have a problem with the idea that they're just sitting there taking degenerates money. Yeah. Um, so how do you reconcile it? It's, this is all laziness on my behalf. Uh, the, the idea behind playing poker in the first place, um, I mean, you, you know, I started playing poker, you know, because randomly another band tried to get in touch with me. Uh, Great story. And I, I was, hear all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I never thought about working with another band. They were one of my favorite bands at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and they all played poker. So, and the other two guys were really reluctant to have a fourth member be in their band. So let's, let's, let's do this story from the beginning. Cause I, cause I, cause I know where you're going with it. And sure. I want to, I want to hear it. So. Uh, okay, well, I'll answer the question real yeah, quick, yeah, yeah. just just to get it out of the way. So, uh, I started playing. I, so I started playing poker because uh, that's what they were doing, and I figured it'd be a good thing, a good bonding aesthetic, I guess, is, is what I said before. Um, and then things fell through, and I'll I'll elaborate on that, I guess. But I kept playing poker because I thought it would help me buy time to do the things I like. There's a solution of like of time that you buy and but it never works out that way. Obviously like you know, when's enough or when when or can you just shut it down? Can you you know, you don't want to lose you it's hard to let go of the progress you've made in in some kind of area, especially when it deals with money and you you feel like you've gotten to a point where you can make the most of your yeah. experiences, the lessons you've paid for, whatever. It's hard to let that go. And it's also hard to get out of habits. And something like another tangent that we can maybe expand on later. I won't I, – I, I'm, I'm on too many tangents right now. But, like, growing up, I was really – like, a reason I really like Chicago, sorry, is, is because it's a big city 
And I like, and even though I wasn't out there exploring it all the time, like I like being surrounded by people. I like the feeling of worthlessness of, of my, of, I, I like the idea. No, I like knowing that like my presence doesn't matter at all to this city. It's just going to go on without me. Small fish, big pond. Uh, I like the idea of, of also trying to build out of that. I like mm-hmm. the idea of trying to like make your presence known in a big city. I like the idea of feeling worthless. And I also like the idea of, of overcoming that worthlessness. And I also like the fact that Chicago is a big city where you don't feel like a cliche as an artist, like you do uh, like in Hollywood where everyone's doing it mm-hmm. and you feel stupid saying, you know, I want to play music. I don't, you know, in Chicago, everyone's doing business and whatever. And just, it's, yeah. it's regular people for the most part. Um, so you, you still have that u- feeling of uniqueness. Um, so I'm kind of a masochist and I also think like poker is kind of a masochist. Like there's no more masochistic profession than being a poker player. Everyone fucking talks shit about you. No one wants to see you do well. except for your real true friends. <laughs> like people will be your friends and then you have su- some success that they deem undeserving and now they're not your friends anymore. Yeah. It's and you're and then you're doing all the normal poker things where you're just like sitting down for forever you're taking people's money it's it's a really predatory uh type of thing so yeah that i felt when i played music and i you know i was doing when i was doing anything artistic or or physical like skateboarding kickboxing kickboxing really made me feel like exploring theory and that made me feel uh like a better person all of, even though it's violent than than i do when i'm when I'm playing poker. So, um, yeah. I, there's I, no, there's nothing to say you can't do both. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean, if, if, if you're out there, if you're a poker player and you have the cure for cancer and you'd rather take people's money at the table, okay, that's a problem. But there's nothing to say you can't entertain the masses on the weekends. Yeah, sure. That's the goal. I mean, that's the goal, but mm-hmm. it's hard. You, you have to, you have to overcome a lot of things and, Another tangent that I won't get into is is just discipline in general and how comfortable you can get when you have some success and you know yeah. you when you're younger and you have nothing you're hungry and you you can you learn to suffer if you're doing it right in my opinion uh, and something that I really liked about myself was the fact that I would suffer and I I uh, I enjoyed it and I felt good um, knowing that I could take it and 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 it made me a stronger better person. You just um, mean being, you know, a, a teenager on in Chicago? And any like sort of – any, any, just discipline in general. Having no money, forcing yourself to like, you know, being hungry in general, be, just wanting food or or having money but like being being regimented about your diet and forcing yourself to like wake up at 4 a.m. or yeah, whatever, go for a run, yeah. go work out, uh, eat clean the whole way, uh, write, you know, just go through your laundry list of things and and, and be disciplined and not deviate. And not let yourself give in to whatever yeah. wanting, you know, wanting a cookie or or like or not ten. wanting to work out. Just <laughs> like in like knowing, going through the pain in a smart way, um, and becoming a, a stronger person for it. It's something that's really easy to lose when you have the money to go for a meal, and also really hard to do when you're in a relationship where both of you like to f- eat or where where you don't have much time, and that is. That's an area where you, the two of you can come together and for whatever. Sure. Lots of shit to, to cover, I guess. I'm, so I'm really sorry for the tangents. No, 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 no. I think no, no. that's it. So I think I think that's pretty much it. That's why I don't feel good as a poker player until I'm able to do the other things that made me made me feel like um, I had a lot of value in this world. Like I realize I can contribute. I realize I can be a good human being, and that might have an impact and whatever. I realize I can be the guy who's not gonna like who's gonna put my friendships before you know, trying to fucking angle you out of whatever or mm-hmm. before anything, you yeah. know, if I, um, and I want to continue to be better at, at those simple things. But like right now, when, when I'm just doing this, I feel like a wasted potential and I'm, I just turned 37 and that's fucking depressing. That's another reason why I don't celebrate my birthdays. I don't know. Like what, what's there to celebrate? Like, I'm not trying to be down on myself. I know I'm a decent person, but mm-hmm. like, I'm not trying to celebrate myself until I feel like I'm worth celebrating. And just doing this until until I can balance all these things, which is really hard, especially yeah. especially now in poker where everyone's getting better and better. Um, and I do take it seriously and I do enjoy it. Um, and your balance of relationships, et cetera, whatever. It, it's just hard. So, um, yeah. well, I, th- I think I think you put a lot 
an undeserved amount of pressure on yourself. My girlfriend but, says that. Yeah, I but, but that, going but back I don't think so. to the Muse story, everyone sure. knows the band Muse. Uh, this is part of the pressure because I remember you telling me that, you know, after your mom passed, you wanted to go out and make your mark or whatever, you know, do it for her or whatever. Like, yeah. So, like, having the chance, like, let's just tell the story. All right, you're in line at the Muse <laughs> show. <laughs> All right, so I was working for another band. Not which Silver is Chair. Not Silver Chair, but uh, similar problems in that band too, which is really fucked up. I don't understand. Um, I was working for this other band, and they've had some big, some major problems. Uh, but their PR person was like, "Hey, this is the, the music that you're making. It, you know, it reminds me of this band. Music, check them out. I checked them out. I'm like, holy shit." Like, yeah. this is pretty much what I like. I was really into classical music. Uh, I have a Chopin tattoo. Um, and uh, I'm really into aggressive rock and I'm really into melodic vocals. And at the time, and I'm and at the time, their performances were exactly what I like mm -hmm. really flaily. And you know, you can just like hungry, hungry kids just trying to do it right and this doing was something first, really second unique. album, right? Uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, Shadow, no, no, uh. It, might, it was going into their uh, third record, which was Origin of, or not, which was a uh, Butterfly. Uh, no, no, it was Absolution, right? Absolution, yeah. I, 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 it's been so long since I've listened. Like honestly, which we'll that, find like, out reason why. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um, Point is, Muse was so, not yet Muse yet. Yeah. So they they were in other countries. They were selling out. Big over, in yeah, the UK. Obviously. They they hadn't really toured much in the states. So they were going to do a states tour. Uh. And that tour was aligning with a tour of another band that I was friends with already. So I was, I was like, cool, I get to see my friends and then see them. So I go to that show. Uh, when I'm at a concert, I want to be right up front because I want that immersion. Yeah. The, the whole sensory deprivation. I want as much as possible, right? So I, I, and to go to a show, I have to really like them. I have to know all their shit. Um, and I'm, yeah, I want to have an experience. So I wait in line uh, and I bring my keyboard because I was obsessed with uh, with playing piano at the time, I wanted to get as good uh, as quickly as possible, uh, and I also, I'm gonna have to kill like six hours, right? And I'm a dork, so <laughs> uh, I, I got my keyboard in line. I'm playing some shit, and then their tour bus rolls up, and all the people at the front of the line decided to order some pizza. So we're eating some pizza on the steps of this venue, and they walk by, and they kind of like look at the keyboard. Uh, Dom and Chris, and Matt is their singer. Uh, I don't think he was there at the time, or he didn't. You know, he didn't walk by. So they look and they kind of like walk off and like whatever. You're talking about the drummer, uh, the drummer and the bassist, yeah. And the the guy who plays the iPad. No, the bass. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. know, Maybe now. Maybe they all play iPads. Now. I don't fucking know. Yeah. So shots fired. Shots fired. So <laughs> show was great. After the show, they they do a meet and greet, and I you know we buy the record. You meet the band. I had the record, obviously, but I'm like, fuck it. I want to, you know, I relate to these people. Yeah. I want to connect. So uh, I wait, like, last in line so I have a second to talk. I get up there, and and I'm like, hey, you know, I just want to thank you for incorporating classical, like, so well into This is Matt, the lead singer? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they're all there. But, uh, yeah, I say it to him, and he's like, he's like, oh, thanks, man. And I'm like, hey, have you ever heard this band? Like, so, like the other, my friend's band, who has, they're like a cello rock band. They're called Rasputina. Um, it's like these three chicks, they dress up like all medieval and like uh, they had uh, guitar pickups hooked or they had pickups hooked up to their cellos and they would just, oh, cool. they would go <laughs> off like distortion, whatever. I think before there's another band called like Apocalyptica that did it uh, and they're really big, but they're like around before then. So their, their old stuff too was really, really cool. Um, there's like some Conan O'Brien performance. If you can find that, like Rasputina, Conan O'Brien, you get an idea of, of you know who they were so dress up all victorian and go crazy so i'm like you might like this band he's like oh yeah that sounds cool and he's like hey uh what's that piece that's on your arm and i'm like chopin piece it's blah 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 and he's, tattoo. yeah and and he goes oh man i love that piece whatever and then uh, what are the odds of that that's crazy yeah yeah then dom the drummer was like hey weren't you the kid outside like playing the piano and blah blah, blah. <laughs> and i'm like you know yeah i just gotta keep busy or whatever i yeah. don't know um Killing time and, and so so I'm like okay well my, my girlfriend is waiting outside for me um or I'm waiting for my girlfriend to pick me up I'll be outside I'll let you guys do your thing uh if you want to you know talk a little bit more I'll, I'll be out there um so they leave the venue and Matt sees me he's like hey man you should come to this bar with us whatever <laughs> I'm like all right cool so uh my girlfriend shows up I tell her uh she 
waits in the car. I feel so bad for her. It, like, it, <laughs> uh, like she's, she really took the worst of it in this situation. But I was so excited, right? Mm-hmm. It was like my favorite band at the time, um, people I really relate to. I feel so, like that's forgivable. Yeah. But you I, get back in the car, you'd be like, no, 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 no. I was with the band. No, she drinking. was super excited for me, but, yeah, I, you know, she got the worst of it and I, I, yeah, whatever. So um, we go in the bar and Matt's sitting across from me and he's like, so, you know, what do you want to do with music? And I'm kind of telling him my ideas and mm-hmm. uh, he's like, holy shit, that sounds amazing. And And I'm like, you know, what are you working on? Uh, he's like, well, this next record, we're going to do a bunch of like a bunch of three bar harmonies and all this shit and whatever. And uh, this is like the gist of the conversation, I guess. Uh, and he and I just randomly asked him because he plays. So he plays Matt plays guitar and plays piano and you can't do both at the same time. So when you have a guitar part and a piano part at the same time, you trigger a MIDI pedal to play one or the other. Usually he'll trigger the MIDI to to play the piano part. Excuse me. And he'll play guitar over it. Uh, and he's talking about all these harmonies and whatever. So I'm like, are, you know, are you thinking about getting a fourth person? Not even, you know, just a random question. Yeah, not you particularly. Yeah. Just, I was, hey, it, be easy. It sounds like a lot, person. you know, are you are you thinking about doing that? Are you going to just keep doing MIDI or whatever? And he's like, oh, no, 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 we want to get a fourth person, whatever. And I'm like, oh, cool. You know, what are you looking for? And he's like, well, you. <laughs> and my, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. head, you know, right? And And he's like, we pay you real good. We see the world, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking like, I would do this shit for free. Yeah. Just like pay my rent. You know, this, this, this would be amazing. Um, and I honestly, I was, I was practicing so much. Like, uh, I was learning how to play like piano pieces, like upside down and stuff like that. Just for like, for the visuals of it, just for the show, just for the fuck mm-hmm. of it. Um, and, uh, so I felt like I could contribute a lot to their show. Um, but in, and so in my head, like my mind's been blown. He's like, he's, and he's trying to sell it to me. And I'm like, I'm like, well, you know, let's just keep in touch. Like, it sounds interesting. Let's keep in touch and, yeah. and just work on being friends first and kind of see, see where that goes. Right. Um, and then I, in my head, I like pat myself on the back for like being, like keeping my cool for a second. Right. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. like, oh yeah, sounds good. We're going to play here, here, here. Um, you should, you guys should totally come see these shows, whatever. Uh, and we'll keep in touch. Right. So you didn't squeal. Congratulations. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so I get back in the car and I'm like, holy shit, you won't believe this conversation I just had. I call my best friend who was my, was my roommate, uh, Chris in Chicago. And he was, I got him to me. He was pretty big. And he was like, holy fuck, that's fucking crazy. Whatever. <laughs> I didn't sleep. Right. I didn't sleep. So we go to the next place. Um, and then that night, like we, after the show, I go in the back of the tour bus and He's like, I want to play this. It's like some Gregorian chant music. And he's he's like, have you ever played poker? And I'm like, no, but, you know. Now, this was right after the poker room had started? Probably. 05, 06? Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds so right. Like, it was like, yeah. Even yeah, yeah, Muse yeah. had caught the bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess he was playing all the time. Um, or they were all playing all the time. And so, he teaches me how to play poker. And... I know I won, but I know it was like, I know it was a very passive. <laughs> I know it was a bad game. It was a bad yeah. game. And I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And I was just trying to focus on like, he's asking my life story. We're talking about, well, talking about life, life stories or whatever yeah. and, and relationships and whatever. Um, and we're playing poker on the side. So my girlfriend's asleep on the bus, like in the front. Uh, and he's playing Gregorian chant music in the back. And it's <laughs> just like, what the fuck? So... At, I, it was then where I, I, I was like, hey, you know, that conversation we had, I would be interested in this. I think it's a good idea. And he's like, well, you know, the other I'm, I'm telling you now, like it was very clear that he knew he might have shot his mouth off and got, you know, got in over his head. He got but, a little too excited, but, you know, I, I guess that's that's what his. So the guy who does all the visuals for the show, his name's Tom Kirk. He does. Uh, their website and he does all the videos and, and whatever. He's like Matt's best friend. He's a really nice guy. I still keep in touch with him like infrequently. But um, he was like, you know, Matt, Matt kind of talks a little too much sometimes and then he'll he, like, I think he assumes that everyone always takes it the worst way. Like I'm going to now, now I feel like I'm in the band and I feel like, you know, I, I have like, like he's like 
set up this situation in a way where it could fail. It could ruin a lot of relationships or, or I could fuck up his own band or mm -hmm. uh, like I could just destroy it being shitty or whatever, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. He just thinks of all the worst case scenarios and then he just kind of like walls off. Right. So, uh, yeah, that seemed, it, I was like, I think we should do this. I'm really interested in whatever. And uh, he goes, he's like, yeah, well just, just know that the other two guys are really reluctant to have a fourth. Uh, but we'll, we'll definitely keep in touch. Like, come to these shows, whatever. So we hung out a little bit more. Uh, and then I went home. I tried to reach out a couple times. Uh, didn't hear anything. And then I'm like, fuck it. Like, it's no big deal. I'll just go work on my music uh, and try to hit him up like some months down the road or maybe, you know, or he'll write me, whatever. Um, so I just go home. I start working on all their shit and I start putting myself by the wayside and I start learning poker. Uh, Learning poker, thinking, hey, maybe it'll bring the other two members of the group around or whatever. Yeah. And oh, just well, no, 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 not not that. It was, I, it, it seemed like, it seemed like a foregone a gone conclusion that I was definitely going to be hanging out a bit. He's like, we're going to record in New York, come to New York. Yeah. Um, we can just try some shit out if nothing else. I had no doubt in my mind that I mean, we left on really good terms, uh, which was clear in our next conversation, I guess. But uh, anyhow, so I go, I, I just wanted to work on it just because it, se it seemed like a good idea to do. I just want them to know that I'm not trying to infiltrate their band. I yeah. want, I, I want, you know, I like being friends with the people. It's, it's just the same thing as going, being a regular in a new group of mixed players. Like I'm new in Vegas. I want to be friends with all the people at Bellagio. I'm very sincere about that. I'll probably get like, you know, fucked out of a bunch of money because of because I'm like too trusting but like you know you want people to like you you yeah, want yeah. your friends you want your friends friends to like you you should at least of course. um whatever so I'm doing all this stuff and then you know I don't uh, I, months down the road I, I learned all their shit uh I've been playing poker months down the road I write I'm like hey is there any news I just need to know what's going on I don't care like I don't I'm not trying to ruin your band I have my own project I'm yeah. super happy to do my own thing uh, we just have a lot of shit in common and, uh, you know, it's nice to meet people that you have things in common with. You wanted to, yeah. uh, I, you, I, one way or the other. You wanted yeah. To, I just want to know what's yeah. going on. Right. I'm, I'm a big boy. I just hate waiting around is always like the worst thing for the everybody. Worst. Right. Like if you don't like me, just tell me like <laughs> yeah. I'll fucking live. Like yeah. you're not going to, I'm At not going to have to whatever. think about you. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I didn't hear anything. And then they were playing the, the cure festival, like in a state over, and I'm like, I just need some fucking answers. I'm wasting my time. Like, I need to know what's going on with, from from my own life, right? Yeah. So I drive down there. I, I, I grew up like Nick here. There was a band Thursday that was playing. I wanted to see them. Uh, so I go to the show. I see the drummer Dom. He's like, oh, hey, what's going on, man? Like, uh, if you're around afterwards, come hang out with us, right? Yeah. So I see the show. It's good. I see their... Uh, just one of their their main not roadie guy, roadie guys right I've, yeah I'm like lost for words right crew now, right yeah so they're the big yeah. crew guy right and we're familiar with each other and I'm like hey Dom Dom said um, to hook up with with everybody after the show like what do you want me to do he's like well you know there was some technical difficulty Matt's sulking in the in the tour bus right now um, um, but just hang out here and I'll like you know I'll come grab you or whatever. So like I wait there and I feel like an asshole and like it's getting dark and I miss Thursday and then the cure's on and I'm like, fuck this, right? So, you know, I make a once over seeing if I see anybody, I don't see anybody, I go home. I feel really disrespected. And it, I was reading a lot of books at the time, like a lot of autobiographies of like composers and it's like Chopin and Liszt and they're like, whenever they're in town they get together and like oh i want to show you this shit and blah 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 and also there's like this big like there's back 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 then there's a lot of like disrespect respect talk i guess you know you and so i was really big into that uh and so i felt very disrespected and yeah and i, I was uh yeah whatever I, I went home and i was like fuck this shit you like, got stood up yeah i got stood up <laughs> i don't know um she's not coming yeah and i'm like uh, whatever so I'm done with it uh, a year later they they play they're playing in Chicago down the street from me 
my friend Chris is like, hey, man, I want to see Muse. You should come. And I'm like, fuck that, right? <laughs> and he's like, I got you ticket, man. Just come. So, and in the meantime, I had sent Tom, like, a long time ago, I sent Tom a video of me playing this uh, Chopin piece. Uh, it's like a revolutionary dude, right? Uh, it was like a practice piece. And or it was just practice, uh, like some black and white grainy thing with no pedal, but it's really fast, so it looks kind of cool. So I wait in line. I see, like, Tom's like, oh, hey, man, you're here? And he's like, you, you need to come hang out afterwards. And I'm like, whatever. So I see the show. Matt knows what's what my favorite song is uh, of theirs because it's a classical piece and it's like falsetto or whatever. And I was really into it at the time. And he's like, this song's for you. And he points at me, whatever. And I'm like, this is fucking bizarre, right? Oh, and so, that's so brutal. It's so weird. You're like so, so ready to move on. Yeah, this guy's yeah, yeah. pointing at you in the yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and also in the meantime, someone sent me an interview uh, where they were answering like Q&A about it. So like, hey, have you ever going to add a fourth member to your band or whatever? And it's like, yeah, we met this guy in America. It seemed like a really good fit, right? And I'm hearing like crickets, right? Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? Um, and at that time, I, was, I had quit playing music. I was just playing poker. Yeah. Uh, and it's really funny because <laughs> I was looking at like poker literature off like LimeWire or whatever with those old school like torrent. <laughs> yeah, like thing, Bear things. Share. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, Bear Share. That's what I used. I used there was Bear another Share, one too. Uh, I forget. That's yeah, fun. it was the original Na- or the Napster replacements. Okay, yeah. Um, so I have I I just found this like ten pages of like this old poker literature that's talking about how to hack the algorithm <laughs> of poke of party poker or something like that. And it's oh, like God. if you get kings, if you get aces, don't get attached to them. They're gonna lose X amount of times. You need to make check marks for every other hand you play because you're gonna win. That I'll I'll show you sometime. It's fucking hilarious. I I keep meaning to look over it, but it's great. <laughs> so it's weird uh, poker conspiracy theories. Yeah. Uh, that was like my only poker literature before like two plus two. It was <laughs> genius. So, so uh, I go see the show, and then afterwards, uh, Tom grabs me, and Chris and I are back there, and Matt sees me, and he's like, "There he is!" And he runs and gives me a hug. He's like, oh, "I saw that fucking video, did that's amazing. I could never do that shit," which obviously is false. But like, neither of us can really read music. Like, we can both of us can do it. Like, it takes a while. Like okay, that's an A, okay, that's a, you know, whatever. We can't, like, just, like, sight read. That's how I um, played music, girl. Really? Yeah. Well, I played eight years of trombone, Yeah. and I never learned how to read the sheet music. I can just, I would look at the music beforehand and write a number oh, okay. underneath each note to note the slide position of my hand. All right. But I was, like, a little kid. I couldn't even reach past six, so. So you made yourself tabs. I guess so. Yeah, nice. That's clever. <laughs> <laughs> that's clever. Um, I played clarinet, and I could read music. I wanted to play saxophone or whatever. My stepdad said no, uh, and he made me play clarinet. Um, because clarinet is so much manlier than a saxophone? Or? Well, I mean, saxophone's pretty I, – I wish I wanted to play drums. Like, in retrospect, <laughs> I wish I wanted to play drums. But, like, my mom was like, saxophone's great. All the girls like a sax player. Yeah. So I'm like <laughs> – mom was a big Kenny so G like, fan? Yeah, yeah. So, like, 13-year-old me was like, all right, you know, whatever. Smooth I got clarinet. jazz. So I could read that shit then. Uh, then I, I couldn't read music. So uh, – so he's saying this and that, and then he's like, hey, we're going to go to this hotel in downtown Chicago. You should totally come. Um, I'm like, great. This all went very well. So we show up down there, and he's talking to some girl, and he's he was going on about, like, how much he missed his girlfriend and all this shit, like, last time we talked. And he's talking to some some chick, and I'm like, hey, you know, it wasn't as, you know, I don't think it was, at least. I don't know. It just looked like some random person. Um... I'm not stalking this this band, and I definitely did not know what his fucking girlfriend looked like, but whatever. So I'm making assumptions. So I'm like, hey, man, you know, you want to go talk for a, yeah, yeah. for a little bit? He's like, oh, we're all talking. Come hang out. Well, he knows. It's like I, I sent an email to Tom. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I just need to know what's going on so I can do my shit. Right? It's pissing, just pissing me off. Well, I wasn't – I didn't say it like that. I said it – I said it – in a way where I didn't come off like a spaz. You I'm just wanted closure a, and you wanted to keep. But I was over it, right? The string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was over it um, because I keep getting all this all this mixed shit. So actually, maybe I didn't say anything to him then yet. But uh, I'm definitely fed up, and he knows we need to talk. So so like an hour goes by, and I'm just hanging out with Chris. I'm like, this is fucking stupid. I'm out of here. So I go, I start walking out. I'm like. All right, good to see you, man. Like, we'll, we'll see you later. He's, no, 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 let's go talk, right? So he takes me to, like, some booth. Uh, and he was like, hey, 
you know, we were playing, I think, Glastonbury Festival. Uh, Dom, our drummer's dad, died. Uh, it brought us really close. It brought us closer together as a three-piece. You know, sorry, I've been, you know, avoiding discussing this, whatever. I don't want to let you down. And I basically reiterate what I'm saying. I'm just like, look, man, I've got my own project. We got along really well. I don't need to be part of your band, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, it's like, it's, I never meet, I never meet, you know, it's hard for it's hard for me to meet guys on the on the road who I can relate to. Like I feel like you like he said a bunch of stuff that I feel awkward repeating, but like whatever. He's just like, You understand my music so much better than like most people yeah. that I meet. All this shit, right? Just all this shit. He's like, I really want to keep in touch. Gives me his like he's like, We just moved to this new place. Here this is my address, keep in touch, whatever. No matter what, we're gonna fly out for New York. We'll see if it's a, a good fit, whatever. We keep in touch. I'm like, I just want everything to be cool. I don't don't stress about me. I don't care. I have my own thing. Yeah. Uh, just whatever. Uh, just want to pass ideas back and forth. Se- sounds like a good thing. So I go home, send out an email, just some somewhere down the road. Just what's up? Get an email. What's up? That's it. And then uh, and then a few months later, I'm like, any information about New York? Uh, don't hear anything. And then they're working on the record. And then I'm I'm over it at the time, but I'm like depressed by now because I I was out of it and then like got pulled back in it kind yeah. of even you know False it just hope. keeps hyping it up even though I've even though at this point I've said like I don't it, it wasn't even that the it wasn't being in their band at this point in time no now it, was it was just just being in New York going to New York yeah it, now it was just like it was just like a relationship that I looked forward to you know it, and it's not is because like honestly. Uh, well, I had been in in the music industry like in some form, and I met like a like a billion, you know, like I I meeting bands was nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Like meeting Brett Favre or Reggie Miller would have been a really big deal for me, like growing <laughs> up or whatever. But like meeting another band member wasn't that big a deal. Mm-hmm. Meeting people I had things in common with was a very big deal. And I was playing a lot of music, and I felt really good. And honestly, like I really like when I was a kid, I'm like I'm gonna fucking save the world. Like I'm gonna do all this shit in my mom's name and whatever. And maybe that's another reason why I'm really hard on myself because like, I do feel like wasted potential. I do feel like I could have made a really big impact. And I'm not saying I can't, but like, I just know I've wasted so much time like doing only this. Right. Uh, so, and also I hate, I hate how people finish sentences with right all the time. It drives me crazy. And, and I just did it like twice. I've done it at least twice. Right. 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 Isn't that the right thing? Isn't this answer always right? Isn't what I said always right? Uh, don't good. you want to agree with me? It gets people to agree with you. I it's know. very, it's, it's very convincing. I can't, I can't stand it. So, <laughs> uh, you are tough on yourself. I, what's whatever. So I appreciate that, but yeah. Uh, so New York isn't going to happen. Yeah. So at this point in time, like I felt, You're I really- honestly felt like a peer to this person who's obviously well more established than myself, but I was just excited about the relationship in general and meet yeah. someone you have something in common with. It didn't work out. And that was really sad. So, and also I was learning poker and I was like, Hey man, look, like, look what I'm doing now. Like I can, you know, mm-hmm. I'm getting kind of decent. Uh, so then I find out that the records dropped and I find out that, you know, they, uh, Chris, their bassist broke his arm at one point. Uh, and they had a guy from another band. They grew up admiring fill in for him on bass and they got that guy to do, do keyboards even though he couldn't play like half the shit that he had to do. Like he had to trigger MIDI again. So he just stand there and press the fucking iPad, like I said. So, uh, so I'm just like, what the fuck? Like no heads up, nothing. Yeah. Just silence. So I write him again. I'm like, and, and also the new song was that song, super massive black hole. And it's not, it's not to my taste. I don't know. I, I thought it was a joke. I honestly thought it was a joke when it was released. Um, it's like <laughs> oh baby don't you, you know yeah. whatever um, it was so so different from you know what I loved and in like the worst ways to me and so I'm like what the fuck is like this disco rock shit so um, and a lot of bands started doing that actually like the lead singer of Glassjaw did uh, did like some disco rock uh, like Handsome Boy Modeling School no that wasn't theirs but like I don't know a lot of bands started doing disco rock shit that I liked too which is weird but Black anyhow, so I wrote him an email. What? It was the Black Holes and, and Revelations. Revelations. Yeah, yeah, CD. that was yeah. that was that record. Yeah. Um, see if you can find who. Oh, Head Automatico was Glassjaw side project. That was really bad. Um, oh, they had one song that I. It was like a hit. Yeah. Bleeding Heart. 
Bleeding Heart Baby or something like that. Was that the that name was, of the song? Yeah, good memory. That, and they had like, it was like graduation like day or something. Song. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to my, Did you ever hear Glass Jaw, though? No, I, well, oh. I mean. If you like Bleeding Heart Baby, you're going to hate Glass Jaw. I, <laughs> I had a weird phase in high school where I was into like R&B and rap. Mm. And then it wasn't until college that I switched to rock. I liked. I'm all over the place. I liked. I liked PM Dawn. I liked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I liked Seal growing up. I don't know. We should, I'm not do, we hate. should do like two minutes solid, like of you just recommending stuff at the end. <laughs> Ooh. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so well, I can relay. I got some, you know. So okay, so okay. Let, let's let's wrap up the Muse. Sure. Thing. So Muse basically puts out an album. All of a sudden, they have a keyboardist. Clearly, not going to be you. Yeah. And you're playing poker. Yeah. And so, it's going well. Yeah, it's getting there. But I, I wrote him, so I wrote him an email, and I'm like, you know, it would have been nice to find out <laughs> yeah. uh, about, you know, whatever the guy's name is without reading on a website. You know, thanks for paying me that courtesy. Good luck with your disco rock band, Ooh. whatever. Um, and right away, I get an email back from him. It's like, come on, Brandon, no need to be like that. Hopefully, we'll see you blowing us off the stage down the road or something. And I like went off, um, and that was it. That was the end of that. <laughs> I gotta got. say, his response so. is, is, I mean, it depends on what tone you take it with. It could be considered like the nice thing to say, or it could be like a big fuck you. I don't know how you took it. I'm sure he was trying to be like, no need to be like that. I mean, come on. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, that was the whole thing was like it was a it was like. I'm sure he meant to be. Ni- he was being nice when he said that, but like, fuck you. I mean, give me a fucking after break. everything that had happened. Sure. You being like, you think I'm just gonna around. take this? Like, you think I'm just gonna? You yeah. think that's tell cool? me in the booth, like, Matt. <laughs> it's just whatever. But yeah, I, I'm not trying to sound like a jilted fucking schoolgirl no, anymore. No, this is a huge thing. Like, this is it was a big a, story of your life. It obviously. Was a, yeah, but like, I don't. I could give a fuck less at this point. I, the only thing, the only thing that bothers me about this now is the way I hand. Uh, is the way I handled moving forward from that point. The way, like, uh, focusing so much on poker and not wanting to touch music. Not being able to, like, this was before I, I really learned about discipline uh, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, I, I knew what it was like to be hungry, and I knew it was like to, uh, you know, to to work really hard in order to eat. But I didn't know how to uh, get over like letdowns i guess yeah get over these big letdowns so uh, especially you know kind of one after the other kind of things um so that's what i that's what bothers me most about this thing i it's just that i, I quit playing music for a long time and I, I focus on this thing and i never really found my way back to it just like spurts do you have music out there people could listen to Mm-mm. no i mean i i have stuff written down there's this problem when you're playing music and you want to and you're like in that perfectionist mode, I guess. Uh, a good friend of mine is Martin Bradstreet. Uh, he played online poker. He was Magic Ninja online. R- amazing pianist. Amazing improvisational artist. Great, you know, great guitarist as well. I mean, all these things. It's funny because he also traveled to Chicago uh, and recorded at my friend Steve's place. Um, Steve Albini, he's a recording engineer. I, I, and I lived at that place. I lived in that recording studio for a while. Um, between in between moves, that was the first home game I ever went to. We all played mixed games, uh, and that circle of people have been become kind of my closest friends. That's interesting but, that you kind of started with mixed games. I didn't though. But I, I mean, I, like as far as that you gravitated to it before it became a big thing. But it was it was also a pro a product of being let down. Um, just to to finish with the the Martin thing, uh, yeah, M- Martin is a a big perfectionist and a big a, a problem is just knowing when to say when and record a record and that that was also something that like I'm like oh I want to get good at cello first and start adding some cello parts and then blah, right. blah, blah. you know you just want you want control and you and it's never good enough it's never finished and he was able to find you know that point where he, he understood that it was time to okay just stop and tour and the biggest thing is just grinding music instead of like for for him and yeah I never found that point but um Going back to and now he's doing virtual reality video games all day long. Like, what the fuck? That guy's crazy. <laughs> so, so yeah, Net Teller went down. I was playing No Limit before, and then the Net Teller thing happened. My money was frozen. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not rebuilding. Playing like I left all my money on Net Teller because, and I had a few months for rent, because I I was 
I never made that kind of money. And I'm yeah. like, I didn't, I wanted to pretend it didn't exist. And, uh, I just, you know, I've got these, these daydreams of having my own recording studio and, you know, all, I was walking around just tipping everybody, you know, <laughs> like I walked down the street, go to the ATM and withdraw the max deposit of $400 or something like that from my, from short stacking, like five, 10, no limit. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave though. I would stay and try to build up a big stack, like a respectable short stacker. No, you're you, you not just going to get you're out, just gonna out and no. come back in with that not. same short stack. So Net Teller seized all my money and then I'm like, I got depressed. I'm like, I don't want to fucking play no limit again. So <laughs> let's see if I can grind rent starting with like, so I, I send, I ask a couple guys, you know, to borrow five bucks and I, I'm just going to start grinding up my rent from $5, wow. $5 transfers uh and sit and goes or whatever like a new game each month and just see if i can make my rent so you know did all the games and then pull out my rent and maybe hopefully i have like 30 bucks and i can you know or maybe i have 100 bucks and i can play a 10 dollar sit and go this month and try to make my rent and it's going to be a big time suck when you have to make your rent in chicago you know grinding 10 dollars and hoping to move up a level at some point so uh yeah that's where the next game stuff kind of came in you had a necessity and a, a new challenge to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell me about the private games you played in Chicago? I mean, you live here now, right? In Vegas? Yeah. So you can burn those bridges, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> what What can you tell me about the private games in Chicago? I think people would be surprised not, to learn. I don't know. I mean, they're not the big extravagant games that, you know, you would find in California. Of course uh, not, but like... They, we had... Uh, we had one we played with Steve and, you know, our group of friends. Um, and that was just like a quarter game. This is the first time I ever played live. And it's just a dealer's choice. And, you know, we still do it from time to time. We all get together. And uh, after after the pizza comes, then we kick it up to 50 cent a dollar, you know. or uh, And, you know, obligatory round of No Limit Hold'em. And then dealer's choice. I learned my f- I played Deuce to Seven for the first time, uh, learning from this kid named Yancey who chose it in the Dealer's Choice. And then uh, Steve had a game called Swingo that he made up. Uh, so we played that, and we all had a good time. Crazy games. Yeah. So just a small game, and then I got invited to a forty eighty that turned into like a fifty hundred, I guess. Um, private game with a group of people who I felt. I felt very close with all of them. I was let down by some of them. Still very close with most of them. Um, I'm friendly with all of them. I don't know why. Some I don't know. Uh, Just because there's just that. I don't know. You ever. You ever have what the ESPN? I'm getting getting (laughs) master's updates on my phone. (laughs) Um, You ever have a thing? Do you ever know anybody who? would never pay you a compliment and when they paid you a compliment if they were like fucking ass they were like an asshole right i did it again i said right but they were a fucking asshole and then one day they say something nice to you and you're like oh my god yeah even though that person's compliment shouldn't mean shit to you because they're just you know perpetual dick it's worth more now it means it means more because it just never comes right i fuck I gotta st- okay. I'm done swearing every time I say right, but it's okay. We have an explicit tag on this podcast. Thanks. So, <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of people like that where I've been a, kind of abused by a few of them, but they still stay, say a nice thing every now and again. It's still, just to keep you on the hook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm the I'm the perfect <laughs> perfect sucker for that. So that was it. We. What do these games look like? Uh, like, would I recognize most of the people in the game or none of the people in the game? I mean, I don't know how. Uh, it's not. There are people who have had success at World Series mm-hmm. um, and cash games, but unless you, if you didn't know the Chicago scene, you probably wouldn't know yeah. them, I, I would guess. So these are like anonymous guys are playing pretty big. And how are you doing in these games? I mean, was it how you made your living for a few years or was it just an occasional thing? I did. at the After Full Tilt and Poker Stars went down, I didn't really play on Poker Stars much. But after Full Tilt went, went down, sorry. And you couldn't play in the states anymore. I it was like the second time I had my money seized from me, so I took a backing deal to play these games. So it was fine. Like I made money, but I wouldn't advocate people take backing deals for 
if, if you're if you're living by yourself and you've got built expenses taking a staking deal especially when you you're pretty sure you can beat a game uh unless unless it's for a substantial sized game like maybe 100 200 50 100 is is enough for you to to grow a bankroll and have some savings i guess uh but it, but i wouldn't take a backing deal for like 50 100 or lower if you're if you think you're a decent player it's it's just going to be like a time suck similar to like grinding the five dollars and goes to pay my rent i guess you just it's it's really hard to to get super ahead uh so yeah i was making money is fine but i also i had a lot of leaks a lot of online leaks uh or live leaks that online players seem to have like overplaying shit all the time not really not really understanding uh, finessing your balance between uh, value owning yourself all the time um and not getting enough value and just all this stuff all the stuff like oh just playing too many hands you don't want to overfold but yeah. you know you you can't overplay and a, a lot of online guys transitioning to live overplay a lot so i didn't i feel like you had the growing pains definitely yeah, yeah. I, I was doing good in that game but i was definitely good action i was definitely overplaying a lot of stuff i definitely wasn't the best player in that game uh i still wouldn't be the best player in that game now I'd be I think I'm one of them for sure but uh the guy who won the Raz Brace last year Jason Gola is one of my closest friends and probably like the person I I talk poker with the most like uh, intensely yeah um not enough really I'm really bad at it in general but uh he won his Raz I I told I always told him he he's he had a, another job. He had a full time job. He's got a family. He plays poker a ton, uh, the cash games. I told him if he if he ever played like a full schedule World Series, he'd for sure win a bracelet. That answers and one of my my future questions. Who's the best player we've never heard of? Yeah, definitely him, in my opinion. So uh, Although he's a bracelet winner. So yeah, and, and, and the anonymity felt, is gone. <laughs> felt felt so good. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely still there and. It makes me sad because he's like he's such a good player, but it's great for him because he's like kind of under the radar. But uh, yeah, that and that that Raz win kind of vindicated a heads up Raz loss that I had to Danzer. So watching him win that, he he played so so great. It felt good. It felt like I was he he got there, he got all the way to the end, and then we had a little talk about some heads up stuff, and I just remembered how I fucked up, you know, part of my heads up. Um, and he took everything that I said and implemented it perfectly. Like, I felt like I was watching myself play. Um, he's already an amazing poker player. Uh, and then, so it, it felt like it felt like a huge win for me, like seeing one of my best friends, like, get that bracelet in an event that means a lot to me because Raz was like, it's probably my best game, I feel like. That was going to be my um, next question. Yeah, but it, I felt bad because, I mean, ODB ODB, and him were heads up, and I really like ODB a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he's a great guy. And I know he had a bunch of close calls last year and before that, so, I, you know, I'd love to see him win, but, I mean, yeah, one of my best friends. It sounded know, like good. a win-win situation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but let's talk Let's talk about your own live, live experience at the World Series of Poker. You obviously don't play a ton of – tournaments outside of the summer mm -hmm. schedule yeah uh you made a couple final tables leading up to your big uh summer which was 2014 you win a bracelet was it plo 2014 yeah plo bracelet finished second in the 50k horse you made i think four final tables six caches it was a very gr it was a very great summer um can you talk about what happened after that summer and kind of how you adjusted to being Brandon Shaq Harris. <laughs> uh, I, like I said, I haven't felt special about myself since I started playing poker, and that hasn't changed. So I'll always feel like I was my best self before I started playing. Um, so when people are, like, showering praise on you for winning a bracelet. Really, or, it doesn't really happen. Even this interview, like, oh, you, you know, I'm focusing on Brandon Shaq Harris for this profile uh, uh, podcast piece. This feels to you like undeserved praise or 
Well, I like I you mean, won first prize in a scum contest, or no? Like I'm obviously very grateful for it. Like yeah. anybody who cares about what I'm doing, and like I I really value my relationships. I'm super happy that you know we've kept in touch. You know we keep in touch, and like you reach out to me. It's not me. I'm just saying. No, media I'm just saying in general. general. I'm saying in general. Yeah, yeah. I'm, my media relationships, as far as I mean, I feel like like the people that have spend time with me, you know, I hope they feel like I really sincerely care about those relationships. Absolutely. And yeah. So like, so I'm grateful that anyone wants, you know, wants anything to do with me and I, and <laughs> I value those relationships, but, um, I don't know after, after 2014, it felt like a big letdown for me. I, if I could have played a couple of those final tables back, I, I definitely would have done things differently. Same with the study, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I won the, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it seems like you're going to progression, so I'm guessing you get to like 2016. But let's let's announce let's announce it to the people. Okay, so 2014, <clears throat> you win a bracelet in the 1K PLO. Then you finish second in the 10K Raz to Danzer. Yeah. Third in the 1500 limit hold'em. That was right. Second in the 50K for almost a million. Yeah, fuck that up. But life changed <clears throat> you money still. John Johnny World got you there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Then you got another final table in uh, Omaha, high, low, eight or better. You got another final table, 10K Raz. You had a final table in uh, WSB Asia Pacific. Then the second in stud, high, low, eight or better in 2016. Yeah. But that was after you were, you won another bracelet. Yeah. The 10K PLO. But it was like almost, it was, it was so cool though because like, uh, I just won the PLO, and then a couple days later, it was a stud eight for nine hundred thousand. And, <laughs> and I won. I wore the, I wore a polar bear, my polar bear costume because mm -hmm. the polar bear comes out for a stud eight. That's just that's its game. So, the small stud eight, the white polar bear comes out. The big stud eight, the black bear comes out. <laughs> but black bear sucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> he should probably he should probably take a break, but I'll probably give him one more chance. And You're referring to the to the polar bear costume outfit you wore at the final table. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. So Are, I, I a wore lot that. Of people who have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I wore this polar bear outfit on day one and day two. I made the final table in the polar bear outfit, and then I played heads up as poorly as I possibly could have <laughs> played it. So bad. Uh, in the study or better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like super like sometimes I'll watch like I watch the 50a PBC back and there are no whole cards but like I can see I remember a lot of the stuff and I know I would have played certain games better and I know I would have made I, I played a big PLO hand that I would have played way differently uh, now but like I watched the 50k and I'm like okay it's not as bad as I thought uh, and then I watched the the stud eight again and I didn't watch the Raz I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to watch the Raz I lost or any of the other ones. Um, but yeah, I watched the study and I'm like, fuck, like I thought it was bad and it's really bad. So uh, it's funny you referred there. to it as yeah. the the events I lost rather than like the events I final tabled and beat out hundreds of other people. And I appreciate your perspective. Thank you. But, I'm yeah, not even a positive does. person. You're just no, you're just I, making me into one. Everyone. No, so thank you. No, I appreciate <laughs> it. Hopefully, hopefully it'll rub off. But uh, I don't know. My girlfriend was dressed up in a in the black bear mm -hmm. and. I don't know how no cameras caught that. That was awesome. So she came to rail the final table in the black bear. Uh, I could have won. The, I could have won a brace. I could have won my second bracelet of the series in the polar bear outfit. It would have been like epic, and it would have been like kind of a back to back thing. But I fucking blew it. Uh, <laughs> so whatever. So 2014 uh, felt like a letdown. I guess a lot of regrets, and I can only blame myself. And then I, I felt kind of used. I felt. You know, I'm not trying to bash on anybody or whatever, but you know, when you do well, people want things to do with you. And then, you know, and if you don't, if you don't keep it up or if you don't make your presence known or knock down doors, like they're done with you. And, and I, I had a lot of relationships like that where people would just ask me for advice and I'd be like, okay, cool. Well, can I just get a copy of the magazine or can I just get a fucking, you know, just whatever, um, or link me to the article or would you mind just using this picture? Because I feel like, like I feel like a scrub in some other picture or whatever, um, or like I, I know I was faking it in this picture. Like I know that this emotion isn't sincere, and I would prefer whatever. And like, 
never. And I'm like, God damn it. Like I just, and then, and then you're ignored. So like, I was already like upset. And then you watch, like I said, you watch some friends who see you have success, like kind of reveal their true colors. Or then you see how people don't feel bad cheating you out of money now that you have some extra money. Like, oh, he's got some extra money. He doesn't need it. Yeah. Like, I deserve some of this. We're friends or, you know, just whatever, whatever. Um, and I'm like, I'm a charitable person, but like, I also get really let down by by people who don't value relationships the way I value relationships. So, Ugh, I, I, humans. Humans, yeah. So, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm, like, misanthropic, but I'm, like, an optimist. I'm, like, an optimistic mis- mis- misanthrope. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Whatever. I just sound like a whiny fucking bitch. So. No, so, but people don't even realize the second you win anything in poker, there are vultures circulating. I have you. some really good friends, too. I have some really amazing friends who have yeah. always been tried and true, who always have my back, who listen to me fucking whine. Like, I am so lucky, and I've got – a very supportive, very supportive girlfriend. Fucking amazing. So I'm very lucky. I have, and I'm not a good friend all the time. Like I, I ignore, I've like, I haven't been on Facebook in like a year and a half. Like there are a bajillion things I need to get caught up with. And I, I want to tell everyone like, you know, I want to, I always want to be a better friend. And, and sometimes like you let things pile up and you don't reach out to people in yeah. a long time because you're waiting to do some, like, you know, you, I used to want to make my friends packages and send them packages all the time. But I wanted to make it as epic as possible, and then it never gets sent out because, like, it's just not epic enough. Uh, so you're and so you turn into a dick. So then you turn into a dick. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so I, I'm not citing to be the best friend, uh, and I do have some amazing friends. So I don't mean to be bashing on people all the time, but I'm just telling you, like, I, I yeah, I guess I got I got let down by some stuff. So I, I was I was already feeling bad about myself, I guess. And then like, it's funny because I sent Phil Locke uh, a dream I had, a really weird dream. There are a couple. The The first one I sent him was I played with him a little bit, and I had a dream that he invited me to come over in California to a dinner party. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't have poker dreams really. I've had like two – Two weird ones. One, one with Tostitos where the chips and I called with like ace high Tostito because I thought the guy was bluffing and the guy pulled out crumbs. His hand, his hand is like a Tostito chips. I'm like, fuck yeah. Ace high Tostitos wins, right? Um, and, and then they're like, yeah, but like all the chips are Tostitos. So everyone just has Tostito. So yeah. nobody wins. So who wins really? And I'm like, oh, oh. I knew I, I'm new to this game. I know it's a fucking angle. I know if, if I was wrong about that call, he would have just scooped all Tostitos. But like, it's like some weird, anyways. So uh, that's my other poetry, dream, <laughs> the short version of it. But like, so Phil Locke inv- invites me to this party and uh, <laughs> and I show up in his huge fucking house and I'm overwhelmed. Like it's so unnecessarily big and gaudy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm Maybe looking it's around. Jennifer's house. Maybe. <laughs> um, I like them both a lot, but uh, she probably does have a bigger house. So we, I was looking, I was checking rooms, to try to try to find these people, and I, I hear people finally, and I walk, I walk in the door, and it's a kitchen, and the guy goes, "Oh, finally you're here! You made it! Uh, put this on!" And he gives me like a, a server uniform, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm here to serve for the party," <laughs> and so. And so, like, I go up to the table. I see Phil and Antonio sitting next to each other, and I just want to like check and make sure that like you know I'm gonna invite to this party or you know am I the, am I helping out here? So I go up and I'm like, hey man. He's like, oh hey, thanks for coming, thanks for helping out. And Antonio's like, hey, can I can I get some ranch from you? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, no problem. So I go run on the back, and like in all my serving dreams. They always ask me for something. I can never find it. So I'm like running the back. I go in dry storage and every 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 uh, every drawer I open, it's full of guns. <laughs> and I'm like, I fucking Antonio's going to be so mad. I didn't get him his ranch. And then I woke up, right? Uh, so I told – I said, right. I acknowledge. So I, I – yeah, I text Phil that dream. And Phil's like – Phil calls me during World Series of the next year, and he's like, hey, man, you got a second to talk about your dream? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, cool. He's like, Jen and I went and had your dream analyzed. And he's like, it talks about how you've, you know, you finally you finally kicked the door into poker, and you feel like you've made your name known, and um, you're underwhelmed by, you're underwhelmed by what you see when you've had some success from people. You're underwhelmed by your relationships and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, 
damn that's like, even deeper than the tostitos so good like <laughs> i'm not into like psychics or like dream things or whatever i mean i'm interested in listening to yeah. all of it or whatever but i remember i met i went to a psychic and she was like you need to be better to your mom why are you so mean to your mom and i'm like my mom's dead man what you <laughs> so uh, so that's kind of like a wrap she try to pass it off like no, I mean spiritual. No, I didn't say anything. I was oh, just okay. like, I was like, okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> um, I just got up and not paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, yeah, it was whatever. Why are you so, so mean, Antonio? And so I told him that dream too. I told him that dream. The first time I met him, I'm like, did Phil ever tell you that I had a dream about you and him? And he, and he was like so unimpressed by my dream. And I'm like, some random stranger tells you that they had a crazy mm -hmm. dream about you and and this is your response? Like, yeah. it was just like, totally, he was totally obliged. He's like, yeah, motherfuckers. You know, I'm going to call out Motherfuckers Antonio. have dreams about me all Antonio the time. Antonio said he was going to be on this podcast nine times. He always stood, stands me up. So. He doesn't remember. He's on my bad guy list right now. Oh, really? Right now. Unbelievable. That's okay. I'll text him after this and it'll be Unbelievable. fine. Unbelievable. <laughs> no, he's good. We, we throw, we throw footballs and we throw footballs in the back uh, during breaks now. So we're good. But. Not, not on that basketball hype? Oh, oh yeah. I was big on the basketball hype for a while, but now that the basketball is down. You said uh, you said you were a big Reggie Miller fan growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got some rapid fire questions for you. Okay. Uh, for, first off, what's the deal with popsicles? What is that? <laughs> so you're referencing a website that I made that needs to be deleted, revamped. No. <laughs> Did you see the BBK? I, I, see I, BBK saw, the, I saw every single <laughs> page on you your saw, website. All right, nice. <laughs> Uh, do you want to promote it or no? Uh, I don't. I don't care. I'll. Yeah, it should be up soon. I, I. So I played. I played a bunch of commerce or whatever, and and uh, I had a miserable experience with Ray D. And I hated poker for a while, and so I'm like, I don't know, Ray whatever. Ray Cargani. Fucking brutal. So I. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. I tried to. I tried to be like, hey, no hard feelings. Like this last World Series. Cause I was just over it, and yeah. he was like, "So it's whatever." I don't, I don't really care. I, I, I just don't care. It was just a miserable experience, and uh, all the angles and all the hoops you had to jump through at Commerce uh, was. It, it was just like you can read about it if you go to the website. There is something called 10K on the table where I would post if I played a game higher than 200, 400, um, and I started doing it. Like I was, I was, I was posting pretty regularly, and then uh, just always some shit came up. As nothing, like a lot of people like quit I, I know this isn't the question but a lot of people quit like doing their blog or whatever when things go bad um, and I'm sure I've probably done that before but this is not the case like it was just like what the fuck am I even doing playing at the commerce like holy shit it's so miserable it's so bad in all these terrible ways and so yeah I just I stopped writing for a little bit and then uh, I had some family stuff I had to take care of so and then I yeah I, and then I forgot how to photoshop so now I have to relearn all this stuff but uh I don't know. Popsicles are great. I got a page called Popsicles, and you know, I, I see a nice popsicle. I'm gonna put it on the page. Bomb pops, especially. That's not an explanation at all, and I love it. <laughs> you said what's with popsicles, right? And I'm just yeah. Like, popsicles are great, man. All right, that's all I need to know. Why biggest don't you have a page about popsicles. <laughs> biggest pot you've ever won or lost? Your choice. Um. Do you go for? I wonder if I remember. That's. I'm just trying to think. I the biggest I ever played. I was doing okay. Okay, I was doing okay playing the 400, 800, and I know, I know I fucked up a bunch of stuff, and like I know I had a bunch of holes that I've been working on or whatever. But I did fine there, uh, and the biggest I played was 816, and I ran horrendously in all the 816s. And no, I wasn't playing like super super great, but I ran horrendously. So I'm sure it was some pot there, some ridiculous pot there. All those pots were huge, and. <laughs> I won one hand at Showdown over a number of sessions, and we had gotten in on Fourth Street. So it's eight hundred sixteen limit, but is, yeah, is yeah. there a big bad game in there? Yeah, yeah. So there's but a it's cap capped. or something. It's capped, yeah. Okay. Which I, I'm not a big fan of. I'm not a big fan of the cap, but I get the cap. So, uh, and then one. Yeah, I just really don't know. I honestly don't know. Sorry. It's all good. Get this. Get those out of your head. Biggest losing day was, uh, I have that on my site. I had my biggest win, big, biggest loss. And I know my biggest losing day was three times smaller than what it was after last year. Um, I think I lost like 90K in a day. Uh, I'm pretty sure. That hurts. Maybe more, maybe less. I don't know. But yeah, I need to, I need to update the website, so <laughs> I'll fix that. That hurts. Uh, best swap or piece you ever got? 
Fuck, you, are you a swapper wanna... or a piece, or do you take pieces of anybody ever? I swap so infrequently, and I take pieces really infrequently. Uh, well, nothing comes to mind, wanna... so no one came through for you. No, I mean, <laughs> I've had I've had some good ones. Like Eric Eric Rodewig, uh took second in the 10K horse last year. Mm-hmm. I had a piece of that. Um, he's one of my closest friends. I don't know anybody. Bracelet who, winner too. Yeah, it doesn't. I like. It's so funny. He's so like. Oh, we'll be playing. We'll be playing at the tournament. I can hear him from across the room. Mm-hmm. I'll see him and Daniel sitting at a table together. Daniel's headphones with Rodawig around. It's great. Like I love it. The first time I played with him, I'm like, oh my fucking god! Like this guy. Like he's so excited to play poker. He's so loud. He's so he's he's like. He's the most – he also helped me sell my grandmother's house, which was <laughs> – last year, my grandma needed to sell her house. He did it for free, mm-hmm. like true fucking friend. Um, so thank you, Eric. And he also made me money in the – you know, by, by coming second in the 10K horse. He's always had my back. But, yeah, the first time first time I met him, I couldn't stand him. Then I realized how much – like just because he was so fucking loud and, and I wasn't accustomed to that. And then, like, I saw how tilted everyone got, and then I loved it, and then I met him, and I, I lo- met him, and I, I loved it even more. It's so funny to see like someone put Daniel on head in headphones like it's uh, unprecedented in my opinion. And then and in between it all like he'll run across the room to give me a hug and then like or tell me some like arbitrary thing that's like like some weird fun fact that like I, I, this is going to blindside me in the middle of the hand and then he'll run back to his table like nobody loves the game more than him. Just just him reading snapple facts under his uh, at his table. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. I just like like did you see that person? I don't know. It's whatever. I, I, I'm not going to do any justice, but yeah, uh, probably him. Or uh, I think I think I had a swap with Jason in the Razzie one. I might be wrong, but I don't remember. Sorry, Jason, if you came through for me. <laughs> but I've given away some epic swap. I mean, I've given away some epic pieces and some epic free rolls that have been spun up. So yeah, I, I'm sure you have a couple like 900k plus scores on your on your resume there. But like Matt, so Matt Grapenthine, uh, we swapped in the 10k Raz. And he, okay, I got two good ones, sorry. I know it's rapid fire and I'm, okay. I'm too long-winded, whatever. So we swapped a small piece in the 10K Raz. I took second in it. He put that piece back into the 50K PVC, took second in that. And then he wasn't going to play the 10K stud. It was like the last 10K, but he decided to play because he got a bunch of money from the swaps and he won that. So that's like the epic spin up. Yeah. And then the the next one that comes to mind is <clears throat> I put together a package, I think in 2013, it was 2013, put together a package. Uh, I got really depressed before I played my last No Limit event in 2013. Um, and I offered the people, I gave people their money back for that piece. And then I offered them the equity in next year. They could either spread that small equity it was like you know you had 10 percent of like one like a 1500 or something you're talking about you had refunds in 2013 yeah i gave them i gave and them a said, refund hey, and do i you want your cash them. or do you want to roll it over to no the no, no. Summer? i know i gave them their cash oh, but okay. i i gave them i gave them the same equity they had in that 1500 event mm-hmm. and let them either take the first event that i played uh the first 1500 or 1k or whatever it was yeah. that i played you could have your equity in the, that first event or you could just spread it out through the package and then a good friend of mine uh donald markwart I uh, used to play with him online. Um, he he took he was the only person who took like the five like he had five percent in the first event that I played, which I won, which was the PLO. Yeah. So <laughs> I got to ship him like, or I don't know, it maybe it was more than that, but like you know he got like forty five k or something like that from oh, like so a, he had from a random twelve percent or something. I don't know something like yeah. that twenty k thirty k something. I don't know. It's good, but that made me happy. <laughs> yeah. Talk about a delayed gratification. But yeah, I'm all about perfect. that. Like, I love that shit. When, whenever someone has a piece of me and like they haven't turned a profit on me, like so much guilt. It bums me out so much. Oh, man. You should stop doing it then. You so don't need that weighing down on you while you're trying to make decisions. Um, this question might be it's perfect for you. Have you ever felt bad about beating someone in a pot or felting someone? Yeah, all the time. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Not just I'm, – I'm talking about like the sad sack at the table or whatever. You ever have one of those stories or you just have a – you know, crisis of conscience every time. Uh, uh, just you're just about beating someone in a power felting them, right? You said. Yeah, whatever. Sure. So last night there was a game and someone was getting destroyed and they're running really bad and also like in a bad mind frame, and I 
I had it I had it in my head that we were playing four handed at the time and there was, you know, some card throwing and some chip throwing and whatever stuff. And I was just like, whenever it comes back to my blind, I'm just bailing. I don't want to be a part of this. It's too destructive. It's not productive. I'm also new here, and I don't want to be seen as somebody who's, you know, trying to take advantage of people on a poor mindset. Then my girlfriend came with in and out like, right before my blind came. <laughs> and well, and you can't get up now. I mean, and she she brought in and out for some of the other players, too. And I don't know. I, so I stuck it out. So I, I, reg- I felt bad that I didn't leave. A, a profitable situation, but like one that I don't want to be a part of. Um, so I felt bad about that. The game broke shortly after. Uh, that person left, and another people left, and no one would play heads up. So uh, that I always I give people I give people refunds all the time. Like you know DJK, the guy who took first in the in the limit hold'em event that I took third in actually, who doesn't need any money, who Wait, just DJK online beasts is, everybody. DJK is not Dan, Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly, that's Dan Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize you got that. Okay. Yeah, beast. So. Uh, wow, Dan Kelly has two bracelets. Okay. What else he won? He won the twenty five k event in like two thousand ten for like. Hold him. Yeah, mm. one point three millions. It was a it was a big one. Was yeah, cool. so he's he's been a killer for a while. Yeah. We played Raz. It was the first time I ever played one hundred two hundred. And I remember, and I needed like I didn't have money really. Yeah. Uh, I was just t- shot taking, but I remember. He slow played a hand. And I misread it. I mean, I, I misgaged his hand, uh, and I wound up making a wheel on like a six perfect or something like that. He had a six perfect, and he played his hand really well. And at the time, uh, yeah, and I beat him. And I had him on messenger. I don't know why. I think he took a piece of me like in some small tournament, you know, F tops back in the day or something like that. Yeah. And like the pot was big for me. It was like it was over two k. It was like 2400 and i'm like oh, i i messaged him I'm like oh man i'm so sorry like I, I feel so bad like you play that so good and i sent him back like 2k and like he doesn't need this fucking money like he's just killing it he's destroying people and i had like nothing and i sent him yeah i sent him back i kept like i actually sent him more than i sent him i sent him what i put in the pot like i gave him you gave him the whole pot I gave him pretty much the whole pot and gave myself like a rebate in the hand, even though I won the hand, which is pretty fucked up now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> and then at some point, like at some point, I'm I met him in real life. I'm like, hey, you remember the blah blah blah? And he's like, he's like, oh yeah yeah yeah. And I'm like, you know, would you give me like an hour of coaching or something like that for that? And he's like, oh yeah sure, but I, I never I never followed up on that. I was whatever. But yeah, so I do. That's I'm, a, I'm, I mean that perfectly hor- illustrates who you are as sucker. a person. Perfect sucker. Ooh, worst uh, person to be playing poker. Maybe 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 you look like a sucker sometimes. I it's, bet I bet it helps you more than hurts you. But it's easy to do stuff like that when you think you're when you're doing well, and then you realize like how quickly things can go south and how how much like those little giveaway bets yeah. mean to you. You know. Uh, worst job you had before poker. <clears throat> I, the worst conditions was I worked at Clark's on Belmont, which is is that a restaurant? A big. Uh, it's like a diner with kind of a cult following in Chicago. Uh, it's right off the Belmont Red Line stop. Uh, and I worked overnights from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. But <clears throat> the conditions were horrible, horrible. I've been in a ton of fights. Uh, had people come, in, uh, come look for me with guns. Uh, yeah, lots of weird shit happened there. But it was such a great job. So many great friends. Great for your your live journal back in the day, you know. Great writing aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love that job, but it was it was just like the conditions were terrible. Yeah. Any, any walkouts you paid for, there's no boss. Oh. Lots of fights, lots of people, you know, coming after you. Uh, pretty bad neighborhood uh, at late at night. So that was, but the worst job I ever had was at the Drake. Uh, downtown Chicago. I did find that's funny there when for you said bit. when you said that you went to a, a hotel bar in Chicago. I almost made said the Drake oh. because it's the only hotel I know because I saw the the movie The Fugitive. Oh, okay, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, All I right. worked. So yeah, they have a room called the Coke Door or something like that. I don't know if that's where it was. I don't remember, but yeah, I worked there for a little bit and it was just like it was terrible. It's the only job that I ever walked out of. It was just stupid. It was weird because I got the job and I'm like, yeah, I moved to Chicago. I wanted to come downtown and feel like you know whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. 
And I walked in there and there's like some great classical music playing. Uh, and I remember sitting in the hotel and it's just like this big place of classical music. And uh, I was like fucking working downtown Chicago, working at the Drake. I'm going to make bank or whatever. And it was like a nightmare. <laughs> I fucking walked out. It was the only one. The reality is not uh, what you picture. Clark's was awesome. Uh, we end the podcast the same way this same way every time with a question from the random question generator. Uh, yours is, <clears throat> this is perfect because you said that you you uh, tend to jump into things obsessively. What hobby would you get into if time and money weren't an issue? One that I'm not doing or, or I haven't done. Already. I mean, you you pretty much do everything, right? Don't you also like... Uh, I just like everything. You skateboard, actually. right? Yeah. Aren't you... Uh, don't you do MMA or something? Uh, like a bunch of stand-up stuff, like Muay Thai and kickboxing and yeah. boxing. Did that for for a long time. I wrote like a little thesis on the parallels of poker theory and mm-hmm. and fighting theory, which I think is really interesting and like kind of underexplored. Um, <clears throat> uh, just like all the art stuff. The I guess the thing that I haven't put much time into that I would like to learn is maybe you know some like street art maybe i guess i i bought a bunch of spray paint i have a bunch of stenciling stuff and whatever i just haven't like gotten to it yet tell me those people do those psychedelic moons like out on the strip they yeah. put the bucket on the on the canvas and they spray paint around it and they take oh the, no no they no take the sharp knife and no they... that stuff's so bad that stuff's so bad it was cool the first <laughs> time i saw I picture it when yeah. i think of street art no it's like, like two minute two minute uh <clears throat> sunsets or like in space or something yeah yeah no that stuff is <laughs> that stuff was cool the first time i saw it but yeah they learn all those that stuff in like a class and well, you could definitely draw i was but, looking at some of your tweets at some of your uh your draw something thanks pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got some dicks in there too dicks on the website <laughs> dicks in the um eh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I've done, yeah, I, I've drawn a little bit. I haven't, I would like to learn to paint more, I guess. Mm-hmm. I bought an airbrush, never got, got into that. I would like to be able to do it on a, on a, learn how to do it on like big walls though too because I have a hard time scaling things. So learning how to draw really well uh, on a big scale would, yeah. would seem really hard for me. So it'd be between that or uh, learning a bunch of languages, I guess. Do you have one that's on the top of your list? language yeah what do you what do you know currently uh i took a bunch of french um my spanish sucks now it's mostly like uh like saca del pito de tu hocico like you have to translate i don't speak a ton of spanish get get your dick out your mouth yeah i I was (laughs) i uh uh, you know like just bad restaurants so you know Spanish. you know i know i know some the important phrases i know some yeah really like elaborate bad phrases i guess in (laughs) spanish still and uh but Russian, I want to learn some Russian. I learned last year during World Series. Uh, so in Raz, when you're you, when you have the high card, you're the bring in, mm-hmm. um, and so it would be bad. You you have the option of of putting in the small ante, or you can complete for the maximum bet as the bring in if you want. Which is never done in Raz. Sometimes you're shorthanded. Well, if you're if you're a short stack. In stud eight or raz, sometimes if you're a short stack, you want to consider bringing it in for the full because you just need the fold equity in the annies more than yeah. more than you want to trap somebody with like a bigger hand or you want to like you want to you want to go their range against your range whatever you just prefer the fold. But so odds are if you're the bringing it's it's, you a, want, it's yeah, a paint card and yeah yeah so you're a big fish usually if you open complete. So um, a lot of Russians are playing raz, young Russians who who I like a lot. Um, so I had some Russians on my table, and I learned how to say how much to complete when I'm the bring-in uh, in Russian. Uh, but, yeah, I got to learn some more Russian phrases. <laughs> they, all, they all play mixed games, so I want so to learn to So you just think of, like, them. the fishiest thing to say in Russian? Yeah, so yeah. So everyone thinks uh, you're a donk? Yeah. They all, well, yeah, Can I bet they already all of do. this with this king up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they already do, but I don't know. They're, they're, they're around more than other people, I, other nationalities I feel like I play with. I'm not really in the No Limit Streets much, so be fun to speak to them and surprise them a little bit. I like to surprise people here and there. Yeah, yeah. So, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you so much, Thanks Brandon. for listening to me ramble. I appreciate it. No, no, no. It's the <laughs> best. That's how all of our conversations go. I love it. Very kind. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Great talking to you. That's it. That's the show. Thank you once again to Brandon Shaq Harris. Happy birthday, Brandon. And I'm sorry that my music recommendations were so whack. 
You can find out what the hell Brandon was talking about in the popsicle section of his website, brandonshackharris.com. Be sure to follow him on Twitter at OscillatorWSOP. That's O-S-C-I-L-L-A-T-O-R underscore W-S-O-P. If you like this episode, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button. If you feel motivated to go the extra mile and leave a rating or review, let us know about it with an email to PokerStories at CardPlayer.com, and we'll hook you up with a free digital subscription to Card Player Magazine. Thanks for listening. Attention American poker players. Do you want to legally cash out your poker winnings to PayPal? Then head to GlobalPoker.com and see why it's the fastest growing site for U.S. players. That's GlobalPoker.com.